Assalamu alaikum. This is Tanvi Hussain, your host, and I welcome you all in a new series called Big Idea. In this series, in each episode, we are going to talk about some big idea which actually shaped the history of humankind. So today is the part one, and this series is brought to you by Digital Patshala, a knowledge sharing platform. And in today's big idea, we are going to talk about the inventions and the enduring Muslim legacy. So we are going to talk about different inventions by the Muslim scholars in different time of history, which shaped the human history. Now, first, let me talk about the contribution of Muslims in the field of mathematics. And if we have to talk about the contributions of Muslims in the field of mathematics, I have to recall Al Kharijmi, who is known as the father of algebra. Al Kharijmi was a Persian polymath who played an important role in the development in algebra, in mathematics, and in Hindu numerals. That's why he was called as the father of algebra. Kharijmi produced a highly influential work in mathematics, astronomy, and geometry. Around 820 CE, he was appointed an astronomer and the head of library of the House of Wisdom in Baghdad. He popularized the treatise on algebra, the collection of the book and calculation by completion and balancing. He presented the first systematic solution of linear and quadratic equation. One of his major accomplishments in algebra was his demonstration of how to solve quadratic equation by completing the square for which he provided geometric justifications because he was the first to treat algebra as, a, as an independent discipline and provided geometric justifications. And he introduced the reduction and balancing methods. He has been describing, described as the father of algebra. The term algebra itself came from his book called al -Jabr. It means completion or journey. Its name gave rise to the term algorithm and thereafter algorithm. He wrote the main mathematics textbook of European universities. In addition to his best known works, he revised Ptolemy's geography, listing the longitudes and latitudes of various cities and localities. He further produced a set of astronomical tables, wrote about calendar work, as well as the astro book and sundial. He also made important contributions in trigonometry, producing accurate sines and cosine tables, and the first tangent table. Now I shall talk about Omar Khayyam. In fact, we all knew that Omar Khayyam was a poet, but history tells us that Omar Khayyam is credited with identifying the foundations of analytical geometry. He found the general geometric solution of the cubic equation. His book, Treatise on the Proofs of Algebraic Problem, which is published in 1070, which sets out the principles of algebra, is part of the body of Persian mathematics that was eventually transmitted to Europe. There was another individual known as Ibn Muad al Jayani, and he is one of the many Islamic mathematicians to whom the sign laws are attributed. Then there was Al Hajjain Hassan, who invented an important theory about calculus, and he is a very important figure in the history of the scientific methods, particularly in his approach to experimentation. 
and has been described as the world's first true scientist. Now we shall talk about the contribution of Muslim scholars in medicine. We all know the name Ibn Sina. Ibn Sina is considered as one of the most important physicians, astronomers, Islamic philosopher, and a writer of golden age, <clears throat> and the father of modern medicine. His most influential work is titled as the Book of Healing and the Canon of Medicine. In the field of astronomy, we have to recall the Persian astronomer, Abdul Rahman al Sufi. He wrote in his book uh, about the fixed stars, described a nebulous point in the constellation Andromia, the first definitive reference to what is known to be the galaxy Andromeda the closest parallel galaxy to the Milky Way. And the contribution of Muslim scholars in chemistry was huge. Jabir al-Hayan wrote Sir al-Khilka, meaning the secret of creation, which would remain the basis of all theories of metallic composition until the 18th century. Likewise, the Emerald Table, a compact and cryptic text which all later alchemists down to and including Isaac Newton would consider the foundation of their art. The first appears in Cyril Khilka and is one of the works of attributed to Al Jabir. The works attributed to Jabir and Abu Bakr al Razi contain the earliest known systematic classifications of chemical substances. Alchemists were not only interested in the identification and classification of chemical substances, but also in their artificial creation. Significant examples from the medieval Islamic world include the synthesis of ammonium chloride from organic substances as described in work attributed to Al Jabir and Abu Bakr al Razi's experiments with vitriol, which eventually led to the discovery of mineral acids like sulfuric acid and nitric acid. The 13th century Latin alchemist, Sido Geber. Now, shall talk about the contribution of Muslim scholars in physics. Al Hajjan Hassan was instrumental in development of optics, one of the dominant theories of vision in its time and place was the emission theory held by Euclid and Ptolemy, where sight works through the eye emitting rays of light and the other was the Aristotelian theory that said the sight works when the essence of objects flowed into the eyes. al hajjan correctly held that the vision occurs when light traveling in straight lines reflects of an object in the eyes. Al-Biruni wrote in his ideas about light, stating that its speed must be immense compared to the speed of Sound. Contribution of Muslim scholars in geography. We all know the name of Al Biruni, and Al Biruni estimated the radius of the earth at 6,339.6 kilometers. In fact, the modern value is. 6,371 kilometer, which is very nearby, and the best estimate of that time. So that individual was Al Biruni. Now I shall talk about the Muslim scholars' contribution in the field of biology. 
we have to first remember the name of Ibn al-Nafis. Ibn al-Nafis discovered human blood circulation in 13th century. And al-Razi discovered that the nervous system and nerves had motor or sensory functions describing seven cranial nerves and 31 spinal cord nerves. He assigned a numerical number to the cranial nerves from optic to hypoglossal nerve. He classified the spinal nerves into eight cervical, 12 thoracic, five lumbar, three sacral, and three coccygeal nerves. He used it to link clinical signs of injury to the corresponding location of lesions in the nervous system. In 1377, Ibn Khaldun, in his book, Mukaddima wrote, the animal kingdom developed its species, multiplied, and the gradual process of creation is ended in man and arose from the ape world. So this was written back in 1377. Now I shall talk about the contribution of Muslim scholars in the field of engineering. First, we shall talk about the Banu Musa brothers, the Muslim masterminds. The Banu Musa brothers in their book of engineers devices describe an automatic Piper, in which, uh, which may have been the first programmable machine. The flute sounds were produced by hot steam and the user could adjust the device to different patterns to achieve different sounds. And now we shall talk about Al Firnas. In fact, Al Firnas's contribution also falls under the category of engineering. Al Firnas was an inventor, astronomer, physician, chemist, engineer, Andalusian musician, and Arabic speaking poet. He is said to have experienced a form of flight. In fact, Abbas bin Firnas, who flew adopting some method, the historians are not sure how, but he flew using some devices. And this incident happened 1000 years before Leonardo da Vinci could articulate the different drawings regarding aviation. So in fact, in written history, we consider Abbas bin Firnas as the first aviator. Now we shall talk about the contribution of Muslim scholars in the field of architecture. Mimar Sinan was one we shall talk about and Mimar Sinan first revealed his talents as an architect in 1530s by designing and building bridges and military fortifications. In 1539, he completed his first non-military building and for the remaining 40 years of his life, he was to work as the chief architect of the Ottoman Empire. The number of projects undertaken by Sinan is enormous. 79 mosques, 34 palaces, 33 public baths, 19 tombs, 55 schools, 16 hospices, 7 madrasas, and 12 granaries, fountains, numerous 
hospitals, aqueducts, etc. Sinas three most famous works. Famous works are the Shazia the Mosque and the Mosque of Suleiman I, both located in Istanbul, and the Selim Mosque in Edirne. In the field of architecture, we shall also talk about the Mughal Empire Shah Jahan, who built Taj Mahal. In fact, Taj Mahal was built in 1648 by Shah Jahan in memory of his loving wife. It is listed as one of the seven wonders of the world. Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan lost his wife Mumtaj Mahal on June 17, 1631. And he was inconsolable and was considering building a memorial that would suit his love. In addition to Taj Mahal, he also built different monuments like Red Fort in Delhi, Jama Mosque in Delhi, Mati Masjid in Agra, Bezir Khan Masjid in Lahore, Red Fort in Agra, and more so, the Mughal emperors built Shalimar Garden in Pakistan, Jama Mosque, Batshay Mosque, Humayun Tomb in Delhi, Red Fort in Delhi, Lahore Fort in Lahore. So these all were the contributions of the Mughal empires in the field of architecture. Now we shall talk about the contribution of Muslim scholars in social sciences. Even Khaldun is considered one of the founding fathers of modern sociology, historiography, demography, and economics. Archiving was a very respected position at the time of the golden age of Islam. And Ibn Khaldun was appointed as the chief archivist. And that was a very prestigious position because that would consider one of the uh, high position of uh, Muslim civilization and it required a high level of dedication to hold that position. Now we shall talk about the Muslims' contribution in the field of medicine. Uh, and in the field of healthcare, the first known Islamic hospital was built in 1805 in Baghdad by the order of Harun al Rashid. And the most important of Baghdad's hospitals was established in 982 by the ruler Buid Adud ad Dawla. The best documented are the Islamic hospitals are the great Syrian Egyptian establishments of the 12th and 13th centuries. By the 10th century, Baghdad had five additional hospitals, while Damascus had six hospitals. And by 15th century, and Cordoba almost had 50 major hospitals alone and many of which were exclusively for the use of military. And now I shall talk about the contribution of Muslim scholars in medicine, in the field of pharmacy. Yuhana Ibn Masawiya was influential in the development of pharmacy. He has been called the divine Mesu and the prince of medicine by European scholars. Masoya directed the first private medical school in Baghdad and wrote three major pharmaceutical treaties. His influential uh, work was enormous and his influence was so great that his writing became the most dominant source of pharmaceutical writing at that time. The first distinction between medical medicine and pharmacy as discipline began in the seventh century when pharmacists and 
uh, apothecaries appeared in the first hospitals. The demand for drugs increased as the population grew. In the ninth century, where pharmacy was established as an independent and well-defined profession by Muslim scholars, it is said by many historians that the opening of the first private pharmacy in the eighth century marks the independence of pharmacy from medicine and contribution of Muslim scholars in medicine. Uh, we should talk about Al Ibn Juhar. Ibn Juhar proved that scabies is caused by the mites and it can be cured by eliminating the parasite without need for purging, bleeding or any other treatments. In the field of medicine, we have already talked about the contribution of Al-Razi. He was also known as the Rajes. Okay, both name actually belong to Al-Razi, who differentiated a, through a careful observation, both diseases like smallpox and measles, which were previously grouped into a single disease that caused skin rashes. This was based on location and time of appearance of sim symptoms. Raji also assessed the degree, severity, and the prognosis of infection based on color and the location of rashes. And in the field of medicine, Abu al Qasim al Jarawi is known as the father of modern surgery. Al Jarawi was a 10th century Arab physician. He is sometimes called as the father of surgery. It describes what is believed to be the first attempt to at reduction of mammoplasty for the management of gynecomastia and the first mastectomy to treat breast cancer. He is credited with the performing of the first thyroidectomy. He was he has written three textbooks on surgery including the Manual of Medicine and the Manual of Medical Practitioners, which contains a catalog of 278 instruments used in surgery. al Jarawi is one of the first physician to describe an ecoptic pregnancy and the first physician to identify the hereditary nature of hemophilia. In the field of medicine, in the 13th century, Ibn al Kuf was a physician and a surgeon who published many books, commentaries, treatises on surgery, most notably of what he wrote is the basics in the art of surgery, a general medical textbook covering anatomy, drug therapy, and surgical care which was by far the largest Arabic text on surgery during the entire medieval period. In the field of medicine, now we shall talk about the contribution of Ibn Sina. His canon of medicine was translated into Latin and distributed throughout Europe. In the 15th and 16th centuries alone, canon of medicine was published over 35 times. It was used as the standard medical textbook throughout the 18th century in Europe. In the field of navigation, trade and commerce, we shall talk about the contribution of Idrisi. The science of navigation were highly developed using a rudimentary sextant. When combined with the detailed maps, of the time, sailors were able to sail across oceans 
rather than along the coast. Muslim sailors were also responsible for the reintroduction of the large three-masted merchant ships in the Mediterranean. The name of Caravelle may derive from an ancient Arab ship known as the Karib. Muhammad al Idrisi created the Tabula Rogeriana, the best maps of the Middle Ages, used by various explorers like Christopher Columbus and Vasco da Gama for their travels in America and in India. Now we shall talk about the contribution of Muslims in the field of agriculture. The Arabs of Al Andalus exerted a significant impact on Spanish agriculture, including the restoration of Roman era aqueducts and irrigation canals, as well as the introduction of new technologies such as aquaries and garden persians. In Spain and in Sicily, the Arabs introduced crops and foodstuffs from Persia and India, such as rice, sugar cane, oranges, lemons, bananas, saffrons, carrots, apricots, etc. As well as the restoration of the cultivation of olives, pomegranate from the Greco-Roman period. The palmyra of Elshi in the south of Spain is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and that is emblematic of the Islamic agricultural heritage in Europe. And before I finish, I shall also remember or recall the contribution of Ibn Bottuta in the field of traveling. He was a great traveler. And in this episode, actually, we talked about the Muslim scientists and their innovations. In fact, these innovations took place before the Western world saw Renaissance in Europe. These innovations are the pre-Renaissance innovation. And before Renaissance, Europe actually was in Stone Age and that time when Europe was so backward, Islamic world had their golden era. So in the first episode of Big Idea, I talked about the glorious Muslim innovations and the scientists and the innovators. In next episode, we shall talk about the Renaissance and the connection between these Muslim scholars and Renaissance. And thank you very much for staying with us and listening to this episode. Thank you very much. See you in the next episode.